this is Craig Brown and welcome to Passages. Passages is a space to explore Bible passages used for preaching, reflection, and prayer. My hope is that Passages will shine a unique light on text used for preaching at the First Free Methodist Church of Seattle or for anyone who's looking to dive deeper into the Bible. Today's passage is Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 to 6, and it's the basis of the sermon at First Free Methodist Church on Sunday, November 19, 2023. It's part of our series called Safety Measures, with a focus on how to shape and define healthy boundaries in our life. Let's hear the text first from Matthew chapter 7. This is part of the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew's Gospel. And we'll be beginning at verse 1 from the New American Standard Bible, the 2020 revision. Hear the words of Jesus. Do not judge so that you will not be judged. For in the way you judge, you will be judged. And by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, and look, the log is in your own eye. You hypocrite, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, or they will trample them under feet and turn and tear you to pieces. When I first became a Christian, when I was 13 years old, this is one of the first passages of scripture uh, that I happened to read. I read the Sermon on the Mount, and these verses in Matthew chapter 7 are some of the first verses I really remember spending time with and sitting with as a 13-year-old, going through all of the angst of being in middle school and dealing with all of the judgment that happens as part of being a middle school student. Um, I had just recently moved from California to Oklahoma and was in a bit of culture shock. And so the notion of not judging uh, became important for me, not only for me to learn how to not do it, uh, which I'm still learning how to not do it, and what it's like to be on the receiving end of judgment as well. Jesus is talking about judgment here. And there are two different themes in this text we're going to be picking up on that are going to be the basis for the sermon at First Free Methodist Church on November uh, 19th. But this first part really has to do with a a judgment measured. And then the next few verses I'll talk about are also about judgment. And then the last part, that second piece of the sermon that day is going to be on enablement in verse 6. So let's unpack this text. Let's just look at the first two verses and talk about how judgment is measured. Now, this passage in Matthew chapter 6 is a continuation of Jesus' teaching about loving our enemy, which occurred earlier in the Sermon on the Mount. And there is a way to do this which ensures a balance between hypocrisy and enablement. And again, these are the two parts of the sermon I'm going to be preaching on the 19th of November. Hypocrisy literally means to be two-faced, that word hypo and then chrissy, hypocrisy, are two different Greek words put together. And it literally means to be two-faced. And it has to do with the, the mask that you would see worn in Greek dramas uh, in the ancient world, which are now iconic of the, uh, uh, the art of acting in our own day. That is hypocrisy, to, to say one thing to another, to portray yourself as one person, but to actually be a different kind of person. And then there's the second part of what Jesus is going to address in this text, and that's enablement. And that, that is to allow the sin or brokenness of others to thrive and to grow. In this case, verses 1 to 5 concern how we avoid hypocrisy. Verse 6 is about how we avoid enablement. So Jesus begins with this word in chapter 7, verse 1. Me krinite, and that's the Greek for do not judge. Now, this is not a prohibition on all acts of judgment. Let's be clear. It's a 
a prohibition against being judgmental. And it's kind of splitting a hair here, but follow along as we work through this text. Jesus has a specific kind of person in mind here. One that he's going to indicate down below in verse 5 is driven by hypocrisy. Uh, an individual who is simply disposed to looking for fault in others. And they do so. They look for fault in others while ignoring their own fault. Now, the, the cause and effect here uh, that Jesus explains to us in chapter 7, verse 1, is that a judgmental perspective towards others will bring the same upon us. Now, what Jesus is offering here is something interesting in his teaching. There's a mystical movement here that, as Jesus is talking about being judgmental. And really, it's, it, it's a teaching that transcends any popular notions we have of fairness, or as we've commonly come to call it, karma, in our own culture and world. This is really about the, the state of one's heart. It's not so much the act of judging as it is the state of one's heart being judgmental. Avoiding judgment, for example, doesn't mean that we will not be judged. So if you were to take Jesus's uh, advice in verse one, do not judge that you will not be judged so that you will not be judged. Uh, you, it doesn't work the other way. So if you don't judge, you won't be judged. That's not how this works. So it really in some sense has to do with a measure of gratitude, believe it or not, that when we judge others from the standpoint of being judgmental, what happens in that space is that we begin to lose touch with our, our having received mercy and grace and forgiveness from God. You notice Jesus expands on this in verse 2 when he says, for in the way you judge, you will be judged. Notice he uses way. He doesn't say, but in your judgment, you will be judged. He says, in the way you judge others. This further explains even in the second part of verse 2 what he means by the standard we use. That same standard will be used toward us. And so in some ways, believe it or not, this is not an act of judgment. It is really a condemnation about the posture of being judgmental. So grasp the cause and effect relationship here. So by embracing a standard, standard or a way of being judgmental, we're actually creating our own standard or way that will be used for us. God's judgment of us is determined by the standard we set for others. And ultimately, as I mentioned a moment ago, this is born out of a lack of gratitude for what God has done for us. If we experience life as as uh, being somehow a recipient of God's infinite mercy and grace, then to not embody that, that is the hypocrisy Jesus is going to get into in just a moment. It opens a key passageway for us here, that a life of gratitude toward God embraces mercy as our standard over being judgmental. This is an important theological truth. God is at work in mercy and grace. This does not mean that there is an absence of judgment with God. So when we consider all that we've received from God as a gift, it then changes how we see others. If we receive mercy from God, but offer judgmentalism to others, it is a witness against us. It's a hypocrisy, a hypocrisy about taking but not giving. In fact, we never received or experienced the mercy of God in the first place, if this is true. So in this way, we're judging ourselves. Because if we've really experienced the mercy and grace and the power of God's infinite love, then the way in which we will live this life will embody those very same things. Jesus spends some time now 
um, unpacking the statement a little bit more in the, in the form of, of a mild parable here. Jesus elaborates now more about these dangers of hypocrisy, the hypocrisy that we might have with the grace and love of God. Uh, Jesus uses a, a parable here, really a metaphor more, uh, more appropriately, uh, based out of his experience of being a son of a carpenter, having worked with boards and sawdust probably most of his life to this point. Jesus can speak out of a rich experience here that the speck and the plank, according to the New American Standard translators, are opposing images. Uh, think of it as a speck of sawdust and a board. Judgmentalism is framed by an obsession of looking for the most minute failure or sin in others. So what Jesus is saying here in Matthew chapter 7, verses 3, 4, and 5, in this metaphor about a speck and a board in each other's eyes, helps make things a little bit clearer to us what he means by this kind of hypocrisy that's at work. This judgmentalism, as I mentioned, is framed by an obsession, really, of just this kind of being taken up with looking for the most minute failure or sin in others. This is the speck, if you will, in another person's eye. But what Jesus says here is that the practice is inversely proportional. Let me explain what I mean by that. The more we look for the small things, the bigger our own sin becomes. So the more we keep looking for the speck in other people's eye, the plank or the board in our own gets larger. The hypocrisy of looking for others' failings makes our failing of judgmentalism even larger. And Jesus has a a remedy for us, and the remedy is to embrace mercy. Embrace the reality that the more we judge, the worse it gets. The invitation is to receive mercy and grace ourselves, and then we can be in a posture of sympathy and love with those who have a speck in their eye. If we look at the speck in other people's eye out of judgmentalism, well, then we're doing nothing different than what that person has experienced most of their life, being condemned by other people. This is the essence of the work that we have to do. We receive mercy from God, and we give mercy at the same time. It opens a key passageway to us, that we fight hypocrisy, as Jesus calls it, with honest self-reflection and humility. Giving the benefit of the doubt and recognizing that people's stories around us are complex will help us. You know, often it becomes easy to look at the behaviors of others and to condemn them, even in the most minute detail. Jesus invites us into something else. The obsession that we often have as human beings of finding fault with others is a zero-sum game because what we learn in Jesus' teaching here is that the more we judge and condemn, in fact, all we're doing is condemning ourselves. It's revealing the fact that we have no understanding of the mercy or grace of God because we can't embody it for other people. So yes, there is a place for the judge. And we're going to talk about that in verse 6 in just a moment. But there is no place for judgmentalism, being hypercritical, focusing on the minute details of other people's lives, being meddlesome, if you will. When we find ourselves complaining or being over, overly critical, our first step is to look within. Find God's love and mercy. And then try again. We now turn to this last verse of our selection today of Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. Verse 6 can appear to be detached in meaning from verses 1 through 5, but I prefer to see how they're connected in some way, how uh, in many ways they're they're offering us kind of, um, uh, the teaching here is offering us two polarities. Uh, On the one hand, don't be a hypocrite by being judgmental. And on the other hand, uh, don't enable behavior 
in others that is destructive to themselves and ultimately to you. Let's talk about what appropriate judgment might look like, or at least one form of it in verse 6. This verse is where Jesus says, Do not give what is holy to the dogs. Do not throw your pearls before pigs, or they will trample them under feet and turn and tear you to pieces. So if we give others the benefit of the doubt, if we offer mercy more than judgment, then where is the balance? Does Jesus mean to say that everyone does what they want and there's no judgment? No. Jesus concludes this small section in the Sermon on the Mount with a seemingly unrelated verse, but it is related. Read carefully. It uses um, what we talk about in biblical study, uh, a chiastic structure. And you spell that C-H-I-A-S-T-I-C, chiastic structure. It's named after the Greek letter chi, which is a letter X. So if you think of a letter X and you were to cut it in half right in the middle, it would look like a sideways V. And that's a chiastic structure. In other words, the way the text is written is almost like a piece of poetry where it it kind of uh, is an outline form. It it's, uh, forms one statement that leads to the next that's the same as the next one that's the same as the first one. So let me explain it. It, it would be far easier for me to draw it for you than to try to explain it. So if we were to take the part of this phrase in verse 6 that says, holy to the dogs, and we were to call that line A1, do not give what is holy to the dogs. And then Jesus then says, do not throw your pearls before pigs. Let's say we were to call that line B1. Then when Jesus says, or they will trample them under feet, well, that's referring to the swine. So we could call that line B2. So B1 and B2 go together. Do not throw your pearls before pigs, or they will trample them under feet. But then the last part of the verse says, and turn and tear you to pieces. Well, that's not referring to the pigs, that's referring to the dogs. So that would be A2. So if you were to put it together without the chiastic structure, it would read something like, do not give what is holy to the dogs, or they will turn and tear you to pieces. And do not throw your pigs pearls before pigs, or they will trample them under feet. That would be the normal way we would think about hearing that in English. But in a chiastic structure, it's in an outline form where the pearls and underfoot are at the center of it, and then on the outside edges of it is holy to the dogs and tear you to pieces. It's a common writing technique. It's used in the book of Daniel. It's used in the book of Revelation. It's used in a variety of places. It's an artistic way of writing uh, that expresses meaning and purpose in what the writer is trying to communicate, in the way Jesus spoke it, and the way Matthew's arranging it in the Sermon on the Mount. Now, the term dogs here is also important to focus on because dogs was a term used by Jews in Jesus' time as a derogatory term for Gentiles. So it would not be uncommon for a Jewish person to refer to a Gentile as a dog. Swine is something closely related to being called a dog because, as you know, pigs or pork are unclean according to Jewish law. They're not kosher. So dogs and swine are uh, two metaphors of animals that reference uh, kind of unclean things. And so uh, calling the Gentiles dogs or swine would have been very, very common in Jesus' day. The other thing to know here is that when Jesus says that uh, the word holy, do not give what is holy to the dogs, Jesus is saying that something that's sacred or valuable, that's something holy. And by pearls, Jesus is saying something small but valuable. It's easily lost because of its size. And what's going on here is that these things are not to be given, that which is holy or pearls, to those who have no respect for either of them. Because when they receive them, all they're going to do is destroy them both, trampled and torn, as the text tells us. So there, there is a place for judgment. That which is precious should not be given where there is a proven rejection. Now, what Matthew clearly has in mind here is the proclamation of the gospel. And what he's really saying and what Jesus is telling us is don't keep continually offering the gospel where it's rejected. It's similar uh, to Jesus' uh, later instructions that you're going to read about when he sends the 12 out and the 70 out on their missionary journey. He tells them whenever they go to a town and they're not welcome, they're to, to shake the dust from their feet and to move on that they're not to spend any more time there. 
So that there, there are those who deepen their sin by continually wounding the well-intentioned. So what is happening is there's a shadow of abuse here. One keeps giving that which is holy or pearls, but yet they receive only destruction and loss in return. So this is the other side or the balance to hypocrisy. On the one hand, we're to be non-judgmental, to extend mercy, love, and grace everywhere we go. But it has a boundary on it. And the boundary is, is that we are not to be about the work of enabling the sinfulness or the brokenness of other people. Here's the key passageway for us. The followers of Jesus can never further sin through enablement. Jesus is speaking about patterns of abuse here in some ways. Pigs and dogs are destructive when given these precious things. So our work has to find a balance between loving others and yet not enabling them. Now, this is an important and, and a somewhat complex teaching we're going to talk about in the sermon on November 19th at worship at FFMC. So if I were to boil it down any further, at least in terms of this Bible study before getting to the sermon itself, is that we're called to love unconditionally, yet do not unconditionally enable sin and brokenness. It's a hard tension to hold what Jesus is suggesting here. But I think it's important that we discover it because there is a prevailing notion within Christianity and especially within evangelical Christianity and Roman Catholicism of this notion that we're supposed to continually empty ourselves and pour ourselves out and spend every bit of energy and resource we have on all that we do without any regard for our own boundaries and well-being. And I think there may be another way for us to look at uh, some of those truths that might help us in ways that we haven't thought of yet. If you have comments or reflections, I invite you to visit my website, revcraig.com. If you click on news in the upper right-hand corner, then you'll see a drop-down menu that says podcast. Click on that and then click on an episode and leave a comment. You can also visit our church's website, ffmc.org, to learn more about free Methodism and how you can connect with our community. I bid you all grace. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.